Now the next one I'm gonna discuss is one that I would love if it came out this year, but I also am not very sure if it would. I would not be surprised if we don't see it until 2025. And that is... Hey everyone, it's Skippy. So, I've done a couple videos about upcoming games for late 2023 and now 2024, but I wanted to share with you all 13 new cozy games and farm sims that I personally want to play this year. I've talked about most of these on my channel before, so you'll definitely recognize some, and not all of them have a release date. I've also got a bonus title at the end because it's technically already out, but it definitely deserves a spot on this list. Take a guess of what it is and let me know if you got it right down in the comments. I am equally excited about all of these, so they're in no particular order and I will definitely be playing some of these on my channel this year. I wish I could have chosen more, but there's just too many that I've looked at to play them all. Alright, let's get into it. So first and foremost, we have Under a Rock, which is a procedural open world survival craft game for 1 to 10 players on an island. First, I mean, I just want to say this game is absolutely stunning. They recently came out with their launch trailer uh, about a month ago or so. There's a lot to do in this game and a huge island to explore. I'm personally really excited for the building mechanics since I read on their dev vlog that they have this ghost mechanic. So you can pretty much tear down your house and move it anywhere around the island in case if you find somewhere new you want to build later on after you start your game. Plus, I mean, you can build with your friends as well too. And then of course, there's also finding giant animals that might be scary, they might attack you, you might have to defend yourself. I think the lighting in this game is really, really stunning in so many ways. The texture and the level of detail that the developers have put into this game is quite insane. Which they actually run on a pretty small dev team of I think about 4 or 5 people. So it's really immaculate that such a small group was able to put together such a beautiful looking game. The developers are very active with the community as well on their Discord and on their website and the dev blog and on Twitter. So you can always find a lot of neat stuff that they're updating about or sharing with the community. And like I said before, this world is massive. I mean, just from this image alone, it just shows how big the island is. It's pretty nuts, actually. And the fact that each island is going to be different every single time that you play since it's procedural is also really, really cool. Now, I did say on Twitter that this game kind of reminded me of The Forest, which I did get a response from them, and they did say it's way less terrifying than The Forest, which is what I initially said as well, too. It is way less terrifying than The Forest. If you haven't seen The Forest, if you like horror exploration survival games, that might be up your alley. I've played my good amount of time of The Forest, and it is... it's terrifying, quite honestly. It's horrific, but it's really fun. So, this game has some elements from that for the survival mechanics and it kind of gives me some rust vibes as well too and arc survival so far i really think this one is going to do very well and i hope that it does launch this year and, and if it does i will definitely try this one out so the next one i'm going to talk about is crimson hollow which is a cozy fantasy game set in a magical town and this magical town is kept secret from the outside world you'll play as the main hero and everyone that lives in this village with you is a magical person or creature of some sort. And unlike a traditional farming sim, as this would appear to be, you actually get to choose your backstory along with how your character looks. And from what I've learned, it gives you different dialogue options as well too. But one of the greatest things about this game is the creator, who I believe to be a solo dev, uploads updates on YouTube about the progress to the game and how she's going about creating the game and her intentions as well too with progressing it. She takes a lot of good feedback from the community too on YouTube, on her Discord especially. Um, so I highly recommend you check that out if you want to get into this game. But one of the things I have to say is I find this game to be so astonishingly beautiful because it is hand drawn. Actually drawn in Photoshop. And you can see that on her videos, which I'm showing a little bit here as well too in one of her most recent dev vlogs about character creation. I am one to say that games look beautiful, true, truly, but I love this aesthetic. I love this, the style. It has such beautiful lighting to go with it and animation. I, I mean, honestly, I could talk about it for a long time, probably too long, so I'm gonna stop <laughs> at this point. But I'm really excited for Crimson Hollow as well. I will definitely jump on this one fast because I think it's going to be a very, very good game from everything that we've seen so far. Definitely check this one out if you like anything that you've seen here. 
Now, Tiny Glade is one that I have talked about before on my channel, and its release date is in 2024, so we should be expecting it sometime this year. Now, this one is more of a casual game. It's a game that I look at and I think to myself that I could sit down and relax for an hour or two, building cute fantasy castles in a mysterious woodland area. I mean, it's, it's so beautiful. The textures are really, really pretty. I've seen gameplay footage of the actual UI. Very simple, very easy to use. Um, I hope it comes out on other consoles as well too. As far as I know, it's only going to be available for PC at least at launch. I could be wrong about that. Uh, one of the neat things I love about this game is, you know, you have these cute little sheep and when you build around the sheep, if you build them too high and they fall down or you remove the ground that they're under, they, they so, slowly float down with a cute little umbrella to safety and you can pet them. I mean, to me, that is just amazing. The fact that I can pet the cute little sheep while I build my cute little castle, it's just the icing on the cake. And the game pretty much assembles itself. No management, combat, or wrong answers. As like I said, very relaxing. You just go in it, you do what you wanna do, and then you get something beautiful out of it. It's almost like painting a picture. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is Little Known Galaxy. And first, I want to say I am really excited to play this cute pixel space farm sim. There is so much to do in this game and so much to explore. I cannot wait to jump in and start exploring all the planets and all the universe that I'm able to in this game. So when you start Little Known Galaxy, you join the Space Alliance as a new captain in training and you work with your crew to solve mysteries of an ancient relic found on the Grey Planet. It is a cozy single player RPG full of friendly characters, exploration, crafting, and farming. Now first, I'll touch on the graphics, which I absolutely love. This pixel style is really, really cute, very bright and vibrant and happy, and the dynamic lighting in the game is super stellar. The animations are really good, and I love the sound effects that you get from walking around and placing items. Overall, I think the game looks really fluid. Now, like any farm sim, you're gonna have a place on your ship to grow plants, make craftables, and decorate your space, including your bedroom and yourself. There's a lot of different customization in this game. And honestly, this game has such a cute, heartwarming, cozy feel to it as well too, just in its aspirations to follow your heart and take care of each other on your cruise ship. And of course, with befriending your crew, you dive through their storylines. There are romanceables, including aliens and androids besides humans, so you can totally choose whichever one you'd like to. And you have the ability to hatch and raise a variety of cute little aliens known as Xeno. Which, honestly, they look so much like Puffles from Club Penguin. If you've ever played Club Penguin, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, and I want them all. All of them. And I think that that part is really cool too, because you actually have to give them love and attention and food, and you'll actually see them grow. So, it's kind of a neat little thing to have in the game that you don't see too often in other farm sims. And of course, each world you get to explore is going to have different resources, different aliens to battle, that help you create new machines and upgrade your tools. And as you play through the game, you will rank up to a full-fledged captain as well, which unlocks new machines, decorations, and customizable pieces in your gameplay. The game does offer a museum as well too, so you will find different artifacts on different planets that you can give to Hermie, the exploration hermit crab that has an abnormal passion for collecting things. With all that said, I honestly cannot wait to jump into this game, and they just recently launched a demo on Steam if you guys want to go try it for yourself. I am pretty confident that Little Known Galaxy will release sometime this year, especially with all of the updates that we've seen so far. And if you guys are active on Discord, you can join theirs and get updates right then and there from the creators in real time. Trade Tales is a cozy farming sim with entrepreneurial adventures, which is pretty interesting when you think of that, so just hold on to that thought. Because <laughs> you immerse yourself in a world of creativity, social interactions, and unexpected twists. And as the name states, you craft your own trade in your tale of this game. It's very, very well put together, beautiful game as well. I love the 3D textures and how big the open space looks as well too. 
One of the interesting things that caught my attention is the fact that you have an in-game smartphone and it lets you immerse yourself into the world using it as like a guide through your daily life because they got social media, maps, online shopping, games, the stock market app as well too. So it's definitely has a lot jam-packed into this one. It's not just a farm sim for sure. You can become many different things like a social media influencer, open your own business, create your own brand, including designing your own logo, flyers, and things like that in the game. And as I said, you can get into the stock market and investments throughout the world as well too. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of Animal Crossing meets a more of a farm sim game. And Animal Crossing has its own type of stock market with turnips. If you've played Animal Crossing, you know what I'm talking about. My friend was really into it and it was turnips, 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 <laughs> and a lot of resetting. So with that being said, this game kind of takes a little bit of everything and really it puts it into a jam-packed game with a lot of things to do. And then of course you do have rivals and you don't just have rivals of marriage candidates, but you also have rivals in the business side of things too. And then of course you have all the customization as well too for your character, for your house, your land, and your life essentially. I think the town looks really vibrant. There's a lot of people walking around. You even have cars and different shops you can go into which I'm assuming you can probably purchase certain shops to make your own. I don't know if they're in different places or not. But this 3D world has a lot in it visually. And honestly I'm kind of wondering what happens if you run into a car. Like I know that sounds bad but... <laughs> <laughs> like what happens? Oh, maybe we're gonna find out. Okay, the car just stops, so <laughs> nothing bad happens. You can't run out get run over by a car. So I can definitely see myself playing this one when it does come out, and I hope that that's this year because it just looks so cute. So Discounty is a game where you manage your own supermarket. You restock shelves, you check the customers out, you make local trade deals, and you befriend the quirky cast of characters that the town has to offer. So of course, besides customizing your shop to be exactly how you want it, it's also your job to balance the many tasks as the shopkeeper. You have to stock the shelves, clean the floors, keep the storage room organized, and you don't want to forget about customers, because if they're standing at the front for too long, they might get impatient and leave. If you've ever wanted to relive working in a retail store or a grocery store, this is exactly where you want to be. Because I can tell you from reading that alone, seeing it, very realistic. 10 out of 10 realism. So I'm actually super excited to see just exactly how these customers interact with, especially when they're not really all that thrilled that you're here to begin with. And one of the main things you can do to gain the trust of the town is you make trade deals with local vendors in town. And by selling the local goods, you can make a profit and you can also make friends with them too. And of course, this game is such a cute pixel art styled game. I love the cute little animations and the general aesthetic that it brings. I love the interactions with the characters that we do see here in the trailer. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play when eventually it does come out. Which the date to be released is not quite out yet, but the community is pretty active on their Twitter account. So I highly recommend following that if you're on Twitter. Okay. I have discussed this game before on my channel, and you have probably heard of it as well too. If you don't know what Witchbrook is, it's a spellbinding social RPG, where you become Mossport's newest resident witch. You make friends, master spells, and you even find love along the way. So obviously there's a lot of promise here. If you like all those things together, it's gonna be an amazing game. You can go on romantic dates, you can unravel everyone's unique stories in the game, their hopes, their dreams, and you find out more the more time you spend with each person, which I think is awesome. It also says that you can shape their lives and work together, so makes me wonder, depending on how often you spend with one character, might end up changing how they end up later in the game than if you hadn't befriended them to begin with, which I always love stuff like that, so I'm hoping that that's what that means. And of course, you live in a magical world, so there's a bunch of different places to check out down in the town. There's tons of different customization, and you can update your cozy woodland cottage. And of course, when you're done graduating the college in the game, you continue on in the town. And I'm kind of interested to see how that storyline is going to progress further in. And from what I can see so far from the screenshots, I truly believe it is going to be a really, really good game and a lot of people are going to jump on it. Now the next one I'm going to discuss is one that I would love if it came out this year, but I also am not very sure if it would. I would not be surprised if we don't see it until 2025, and that is Haunted Chocolatier. Now if you know Stardew Valley, you probably know Haunted Chocolatier. 
If you don't know what it is, in this game, you'll play as a chocolatier living in a haunted castle. And in order to thrive, you'll have to gather rare ingredients, make delicious chocolates, and sell them to the chocolate shop. And this is of course Concerned Apes, aka Eric Baroni's next game after Stardew Valley. And I think it's really important to note that because one, it's Haunted Chocolatier. Two, the style is so very similar. And three, it's actually in the Stardew Valley universe. So I find that to be really, really cool because in the game, we're probably gonna see familiar places or things or things that kind of put two and two together. You can tell here in the trailer that the visuals and the walk cycles very similar. It looks a lot like Stardew Valley. But I will say that the lighting and the textures are way updated. They look absolutely gorgeous and everything about it is so pretty. And overall, this game is definitely a lot different than what we've been used to. So I really can't wait for this one, as like many people. And honestly, I think that when this game actually comes out, one, I don't think it's going to have a release date. I think Concerned Ape is just going to launch it and it's just gonna be available. And I do think it is going to break YouTube. It'll probably break the internet a little bit too. Twitch is probably gonna be streaming it. And besides the normal duties of being a chocolatier, you also get to meet a huge cast of characters, a lot of romanceables, just like in Stardew Valley, and a lot of cool cutscenes. This is gonna be such a great game. And I, I truly, truly cannot wait for this one. I will play it as soon as it releases. And the next one I'm gonna discuss is one that a lot of people do know about, which is Chef RPG, where you craft your culinary adventure in a beautiful pixel art world. You'll manage your restaurants, forage, and hunt for ingredients, befriend the locals, and grow your culinary empire. We're thrown into a very cyberpunkish, pixelated world. And I just want to say, like most of these games, all of them really, I love how it looks. I love the aesthetic, I love the animation, the lighting. It is a very beautifully crafted game with a lot of character customization as well too. And then of course, running the restaurant, which is the main part of the game, getting ingredients, whether it's from people or going out and finding them, building your restaurant and creating how it looks, and of course, making the food. The mini games that come with the food look really, really fun. Making the food looks fun. And I will just say, I love food games, because I, especially pixel food games, because they just look so good. And I really like the animated portraits of the characters you meet as well too. That is something you don't see too often. And this game has a couple of different ways you can progress through it too. So you can impress your customers by having rare ingredients from being a brave adventurer, or you can impress them by creating a network of friends and grow your business through charisma and influence. And I think this one is going to be really good and it hasn't been announced on when its actual release will be. I would like to hope that it will be this year in 2024, but I guess we'll see. Fields of Mystria is where you build the farm of your dreams as you discover a world brimming with possibilities. There's magic, romance, and adventure all in this farm sim RPG. And first, I just want to say I love the cute style of this game. It has a very 90s anime-esque to it, which I also think is really, really cool. The colors are super vibrant, and the cast of characters are very, very diverse, which I think is super great. There's plenty of different people to romance and befriend in the game as well, too. And there is a pretty deep storyline when it comes to character development. There are currently 12 marriage candidates and two of them are still a mystery. So there's something to kind of keep updated on to see when they release it, or we might not even know until the game releases. And during the game, as you progress through your storyline, you unlock magic that helps you during farming and adventuring. And the animals that you can breed can be crossbred for different colors, which is also super unique in these types of games. Overall, I think this game is adorable, has cute little sprites, and a lot of different things to offer, and I will definitely be trying this one out. Moonlight Peaks is a very interesting farm sim, and that is because you are a vampire and you play at night. So those two things alone are very divergent for your standard farm sim game. And so in this game, not only do you do all your farm sim things, you can also decorate your farm in like a really cool and advanced way. You also master the art of potion making, spell casting, and you tend to a supernatural aspect to your farm as well. You befriend the locals, which include werewolves, witches, and mermaids, and you can find eternal love along the way. And there's a lot of different marriage candidates to choose from as well. So Supernatural dating scene is pretty intense in this one, which I love. 
And as for the gameplay elements, I actually got to play the decor demo back in October, and I really liked how the game played and what it had to offer you. There's a couple of interesting things when it comes to crops. Bells help you water your crops, they help you grow your crops. There is a lot of decoration items that you can use inside and outside to not only just create your farm as a place for you to grow stuff, but also to just decorate it, which kind of gives me an Animal Crossing's vibe with the placement of items and choosing things around. And one of the best things about the decoration is you don't have to be standing next to something that you want to move. It allows you to pick up anything on the map and move it to wherever you want to, which is very intuitive and makes it a lot easier. Plus, I mean, you get to fly around as a bat. And like I said, playing at nighttime is really interesting because it doesn't feel like nighttime, but then you look at the clock and you realize it's 4 a.m. and it's still kind of dark and then it's like 6 a.m. and the sun's coming out and it's like, get inside or you're gonna start burning. It's pretty cool, actually. It's really fun. It's like passing out at 2 a.m. in Stardew Valley. And of course, they have mini games as well, too. And besides everything else that I've stated, it has a pretty good storyline from what I've seen so far is you come to this farm, your father who is Dracula really doesn't want you to, and it's a very interesting outlook on how your parents view you and what you end up doing on the farm. So I'm really interested to see how that storyline progresses. And one last thing I do want to touch on is I love the sprites. And I really, really love the character portraits when you're talking to them. They are super detailed and so pretty. I love the brush stroke look to them. And I think they're very, very unique. And they, each character has like their own identifying features with it too. So it currently doesn't have a release date. But given that we've had two demos since October, I would like to hope that it at least comes in early access sometime this year. We will see. But once it does, I am definitely going to try this one out. Wish Upon a Llama is where you will embark on a delightful journey of breeding and raising adorable animals like llamas, bunnies, capybaras, and while you build meaningful relationships with the residents of Llama Town. And so obviously you can tell here that it is a very cute pixel styled game, very pastel colored I'd like to say, and the little animals that you breed and raise follow you around town. And something that I really, really like about the breeding is that they will change colors and patterns as you breed them through the line. And you can actually track the lineage of the llamas, of the bunnies, of whatever you're going to end up breeding. Which they have added recently and in the last few months, a lot of different animals for you to actually take care of. Which I think is super cool. The town is really, really vibrant. There's a lot of different characters to meet and talk to, including romanceables of a very much diverse cast as well too that you can become friends with and marry and of course you can customize your home a lot like there's a lot of different options you can customize yourself your home and your yard to where it almost doesn't even look like you're in the same place like in the game when you look at it i definitely think this one is really really cute and it's one that i really want to try out for a lot of reasons it also doesn't have a release date just yet but i am hoping that they will bring it out in early access or full release sometime this year in 2024. So Nightingale is an open world survival craft game where you set out on a journey of survival and adventure into a mysterious and dangerous fey realms of Nightingale. You become a realm walker and you venture forth alone or with friends to explore, craft, and build, and you fight across a visually stunning world. I mean, this game is insane when it comes to how visually it looks, the different worlds you can explore, the portals you go through, the animals that you come across, it definitely reminds me of a lot of other games that are kind of coming up now, but it has like its own kind of almost steampunkish vibe to it. And I think that's really, really cool. Somewhere between steampunk and magic, like fantasy steampunk, I guess, if you want to call it that. But it's a really pretty game and you can play it with friends. It is similar to like Ark Survival and the other game that I talked about earlier under a rock in terms of finding a world, building, you know, crafting, playing with friends. Uh, but it has its own type of charm to it as well too. And one of the cool things is as you build a variety of styles and tile sets in the game, you can upgrade them and customize the structure and form like actual communities that you can live safely in. Now obviously this can be either a really good thing or a really bad thing depending on how the community is managed by the players, but it kind of allows you a safety net for venturing out into like the dangerous lands. So I'm really interested to see how that is going to come through as well, whether you're in co-op or solo. 
And of course, in order to travel through the realms, you can assemble realm cards to reshape the landscape of your next destination, which is kind of like how you jump from place to place of having like a desert map to having a more tropical map or even a snowy map. And each realm features new dangers, discoveries, surprises, different hostiles, more resources, and the environment itself will be vastly different. But it makes me wonder how many realms will exist on a single server. So I think that that's really interesting. Now, Nightingale is going to release in early access on February 22nd, so in about a month from now, from the time of me recording this, it's going to be out for you guys to try it out if you want to, or to watch people stream it. I think it is going to be a really neat game when it does come out, and like I said, it is quite visually stunning. I'm really excited to see how this grows. And I would definitely want to give this one a shot, especially with some of my friends, because this one looks like it's a game that's better with friends. Now, those are the main games that I'm excited to hopefully release this year, but I want to jump into my bonus game that hopefully you guessed correctly, which is Stardew Valley 1.6 Update. Now, I've added Stardew on here because I have hundreds of hours in Stardew Valley, I've dived into some mods, but nothing has excited me more in a long time for Stardew Valley than the 1.6 update, which we learned about maybe a month or so ago at this point. And you can see here in Concerned Ape's post that he gave us on Twitter, which kind of details some of the new stuff that's going on. And he's been very slowly leaking out a few pictures here and there, a little bit of information, pictures that have a lot of secrets in them if you look deep enough. So I'm really excited for that because they got a new major festival with something I've been waiting for a really long time, which is winter clothing on NPCs. I love seasonal outfit mods. I'm okay with them having regular clothes from spring to fall and then just having winter. I would like them all to be different all year round, but I will take what I can get. And so the fact that they have winter clothing is going to be super, super cool. I'm a very aesthetic, customizable person. And then not only that, there's more secrets, a new farm type, which I will jump in as soon as possible and try that out. There's a bunch of new dialogue as well, too. There's JoJo alternatives to some of the endgame quests, which I think is really important because a lot of people do the community center and they don't do the JoJo route, including myself. I've never done the JoJo route. So for people that do do that, I feel like they do kind of miss out on some of the things. And then, of course, you've got new late game content that's coming. And then a bunch of different like small additions that we're seeing as well too. Like the big chest instead of the regular chest. Putting hats on your cat and your dog. That is just amazing. You can already do it to your horse apparently. I didn't even know that. But being able to do it to your cat and your dog, that's just going to make it so much better as well too. So I'm really excited to see what we find once the game launches. And I also do believe the 1.6 update will just launch. But yeah, that is definitely one that I will play instantly because I already have it. I own Stardew Valley in like three different places. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about those. And as always, thank you for watching. If any of these games piqued your interest, hit the subscribe and bell buttons to get notified when I make a new video or when I go live. I'll see you in the next one.